So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about my entire YouTube setup, how I make these videos, and also give you guys some tips and tricks and how you guys can make better videos as well. Now this video will be in depth, but I can't go in too much detail about every single section. So if there's a certain section that you want me to elaborate more about and make a separate video on, then leave it down in the comment section below and then I can definitely look at making those videos separately. But let's get into how I actually make my videos. Step one really for any great video is coming up with a good idea. Now for my channel, it really sometimes isn't that hard because most brands will approach me with a product they want reviewed. And then of course that is sort of the topic of the video, but sometimes I still do approach other brands with video ideas and make videos like these that aren't reviews at all. The type of ideas for videos that you will have will be determined by the type of channel that you have. And starting out, it can be really hard to find ideas. So one tip would be to actually go and find a few channels in your niche and see what videos they are making, see what videos that are working for them, and then sort of make your videos around those topics. Another thing that you can do is see if there's any gap in the videos that they're making. Maybe they're making videos around a certain topic, but they're missing a few gap points here and there. But of course, you can fill those gaps by making those videos or just think to yourself, what are the questions that you have in that topic and make videos about that. Another way to get video ideas is with vidIQ. And even with their free plans, they do provide you with three video ideas every single day for your channel. And that means you're getting 21 video ideas a week. And even if only one or two or three of them are good, you still have three video ideas a week. So if you wanna sign up to vidIQ, I have a link down in the description below for you to go and sign up there. Now that you have your video idea, now it's time to come up with a title and a thumbnail that people would actually wanna click on. By starting with your title and your thumbnail, you're ensuring that your title and thumbnail are really clickable. But then of course, those can also lead the context of your video, meaning that you're actually providing on that promise that your title and your thumbnail are actually making. There's nothing worse than finding a video with a really clickable title and a thumbnail, and then having the video be absolutely nothing about the title or the thumbnail. By first scripting your video, you can sort of find yourself in a position where you have to force a title and a thumbnail on a video that doesn't really work. So start off with your title and your thumbnail first because it doesn't matter how good your script or your video is if nobody actually chooses to click on that video and watch it. Great titles usually get people thinking and make them curious about that certain topic or it answers someone's question. So keep that in mind where you're actually trying to come up with titles for your videos. Think Media also has a great video on the 10 best video titles that you can use for your videos. So be sure to check that out for that blueprint on how to get better with YouTube titles. Now you're ready to script your videos. And as mentioned before, now that you have your title and your thumbnail, let this lead your script to ensure that you're actually delivering on that promise. Now for me, I tend to script my videos word for word as I do have this sort of trend to just keep talking. And if I don't script my videos, I would probably make videos that are hours long without any sort of clear direction. And of course, this isn't something that you have to do. You can simply make bullet points on the topics you wanna to cover. Let's say you have your intro and you know what you wanna say in your intro. You can just simply say intro, then part one, part two, part three, part four, and just cover all of those parts to have your videos sort of still have a flow in the right direction. So for example, let's say you're watching this video and I start talking about the gear that I'm using, then how I script, then all of a sudden how I edit, then moving back to all the tips and tricks on lighting. Then I go back again to why you should make your titles and thumbnails enticing. And then it's sort of just all over the place. You will get confused. You wouldn't know what this video is about. And of course, you'll probably just click off because there's no way to logically follow the steps. This is why it's really important to have at least some sort of guideline so that the viewers have a start and an end point to a video and you can sort of take them along that journey with your video. So now that you have your title, your thumbnail, your script, now you're finally ready to film. Filming has a lot of different aspects and I will be running through everything I do and the gear that I use, but I will also be providing you guys with alternatives because gear shouldn't be the reason that you start or never start. Make videos with whatever you have because this will build up your skill as well as your portfolio. And this is really what's important to brands and of course your viewers. When I started my tech review channel, of course I didn't have tech brands filling up my email just to send me products for review. And I wasn't baller enough to just go out week by week and buy different tech. So of course I had to make a plan. So back in the day, I actually started making YouTube videos 
with a webcam and a light that I made myself. And I just started reviewing tech that I owned or just looking at tech that's being released, doing a bunch of research and just making sort of informative videos about that tech without having to actually own that product. Two years later, I have a lot of gear that makes making these videos a whole lot easier and I have brands sending me products now, but I wouldn't have reached this point if I didn't just start making videos. So whatever you do is just start making videos with whatever you have and try and improve a little with each video. So for my entire setup, I'm using two lights to light myself. I have one light in the background just to add some color to the background. I have a shotgun mic that's just out of frame. And then of course I have my camera dead center in front of me. So how I do my entire setup is as follows. I do have my camera straight in front of me. And I usually use about a 35 to a 50 millimeter lens to really get a lot of compression in the background, but also because of the space, I don't have a lot of really flattering areas on all sides. So I really try and get a little bit closer in just to sort of hide the rest of the house. So to the left of my camera, just a little bit above, is my key light. Now this is just an Amaran 60D with a Godox softbox. But before that I used a ring light, but you can also take any sort of light and just bounce it off a white wall or any sort of white surface and just have that reflect onto you. But that will create soft light as well. Or you can just sit in front of a window to get natural light as that is actually free. Now I place my light anywhere from like 30 to 45 degrees off of the axis of the camera to the side and also a little bit down on my face to really create a little bit of shadow in your face to really add some dimension. And then on the side of me, I do have a tube light. This sort of acts as an edge light as well as a full light, just because of the angle that it is at. Preferably, you would like to have your edge light either opposite of your key light, so somewhere around here or completely behind you and shining down so you can get this nice edge around you to separate you a little bit more from your background. But of course, this isn't always possible. That is why mine is just resting here on the side because I can't actually mount it somewhere up on the roof to have it shine down on me. And for about a year and a half, I didn't even use an edge light. So this isn't a thing that you need. It's just something that adds a little bit more to your videos. One thing to keep in mind here is that lights are more important than the camera. Rather start investing in good quality lighting earlier than going out and buying a really expensive camera as having a really expensive camera with bad or no lighting will look worse than having good lighting with a cheaper camera. Then to my right, I do have my mic boom just out of frame on this sort of mic arm. And then because this room isn't really treated, I do have a lot of foam that I just sort of place around. But of course you can use anything from pillows, blankets, anything that you have handy and just throw them around the area to sort of absorb the sound and have it bounce around less and create less echo. Now, of course, this is the cheapest way of doing it as a lot of people do have pillows and blankets just lying around so you can just throw them around the entire room, but it does take up a little bit more time setting up as well as packing everything away. Now, a little tip I do while filming is the last take is the best take method. And what that really means is I'll continue doing the same part over and over and over again until I've nailed it before I actually move on to the next part as this has saved me a bunch of time in editing by doing it this way. So firstly, why this saves me a lot of time is usually in the past, I would say one part of a sentence may be really good. And then in a second take, I'll say the second part really good. And then I would have to spend some time trying to mash these two sentences together. And sometimes you don't speak at the same volume. You don't speak at the same sort of intensity as you did from the one to the next sentence. And that way it can be really hard to sort of match two sentences together. Whereas with this method, you just have one full paragraph or one full sentence. And that way you can just sort of match them all together. Second reason why this saves me a bunch of time is because in my edits, I do have these sort of dead sections where the volume is down because you sort of stop in between takes. And then all I have to do is go to the first few seconds and listen to that of each take until I find where it changes. And as soon as that first few seconds changes, then I know the last take is the right take and I can just cut that out and use that for the video. Another thing I do is film all my A-roll shots, which is this one in 24 frames per second, and then all of my B-roll in either 60 or 120 frames per second, depending on how smooth or how slow I want the motion to be. So you have filmed your masterpiece and now it is time to edit. And I just have to give a huge shout out to ASUS for actually sending me this laptop to edit on without me even asking for it when my PC was going through some troubles. It really has helped me out a lot and I really do appreciate you guys 
So thank you very much. Not sponsored, by the way. They're actually taking the laptop back. Once I'm on my PC, I'll make different folders for my videos to split everything into where they actually have to be. So for example, I have a folder named videos for all of my A-roll clips, which are these. Then I'll make a B-roll folder and place all of my B-roll into that folder. Then if I use any sort of images, I'll make an image folder. If I use any sort of music or sound effects, I'll make different sort of folders for that, so music and sound effects, and place everything in there. And for example, with this video, we'll have a lot of screen recordings, and thus I'll make a folder for screen recordings as well. This, of course, just keeps everything sorted. And once I actually import that to Premiere, it makes it really easy to find the clips that I'm looking for because if I'm editing A-roll, simply go into the A-roll folder and all of the A-roll is there. If I need B-roll, I can just go into the B-roll folder and everything is there. And you know, you get the point. Now, when you're just starting out, I would suggest starting out with DaVinci Resolve. It is a really powerful video editor, even on the free version. And of course, since it is free, you can save up a lot of money just starting out which you may not have, or which you may not want to actually invest in a video editor, because then of course you can just make upgrades on lights and everything else so much quicker. Then I'll also say, try and find tutorials on the video editor that you're using and try and improve with every single video. Now, of course your first few videos may suck, but as you continue learning and practicing, you'll get better and better. And you'll of course get more efficient with video editing, which means you'll edit faster over time. Now, in terms of how I edit, I usually start off with my A-roll, which is all of these, and just cut the entire video together until I have the entire A-roll video together. Then I'll go again through and I add all of my B-roll footage to make the video look about 90% of how it would look like once I actually upload the video. Now, once I've added the B-roll, I'll then do my color correction. I don't really do a lot there. It's just sort of basic tweaks here and there to make it look a little bit better. Then. Once that is done, I'll add any sort of graphics and text that I have above that, and then just finish it off with music before I actually export. One thing I really wanna work on this year is with sound design for my videos, but for now, I just sort of add a song throughout the entire thing just to add some ambiance. Now in terms of exporting, I always export my videos at 2K at 25,000 bitrate and audio normalization at around minus 14 LUFs, as I've seen that that is sort of the settings that YouTube likes best. Now, of course, this can change from person to person, but for me, that is sort of the settings that I've been using. And that is how I sort of film, plan, and edit these videos. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comment section below. If there's a certain section that you would want me to go into more depth about, then of course, you can also ask me to do that as well in the comment section below. And then, as always, until next time, cheers.